What is up everybody? We are back. Another episode of Team Aquascape. Today's episode, we are going to be working on a sensory garden. You heard it right, sensory garden. Today's water feature is going to be all about tantalizing all the senses, visual, audio, and touch and feel. This is going to be so much fun to build because we are in a backyard setting that is about the size of a postage stamp and we are going to pull off something incredible today. You guys ready to go? Let's do this. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So like I said, we are in a postage stamp sized backyard, but we already have the pond painted out. Seven by nine foot pond. We've got a meandering stream in through here. And then we are also gonna be working in a stack slate sphere somewhere in the stream or water feature. Haven't really decided yet, but we wanna make sure that we capitalize on the views from the house, as well as this incredible backyard studio. Earlier in the video, I talked about it being a sensory garden. Now the client here works with people with various developmental disabilities and special needs and therapy is a big part of her business and she has her students and the people she helps come to her home so the importance of this water feature being extra special and paying extra attention to the detail making it so that people can interact with it and really enjoy everything that we talk about when we talk about living the aquascape lifestyle is going to be so important to pull off today so let's go ahead and get everything dug out we're going to repaint the pond because we have a substantial grade change from the patio all the way up to there so we have to actually pull out a lot of this dirt so what i'm going to do first is get all of this dirt and grass out of here dig it down get it level to grade and then we will go ahead and repaint everything and then i will go back over with you the layout of the pond and the overall intention of this water feature okay let's have some fun all right so excavation has begun we've got our roll off which is always super super helpful so we're going to fill this entire truck bed with the excavated soil that we bring out of here once we get about 95 percent of that dirt pulled out we're going to go ahead and get our bio balls set back up in the corner get our plumbing trenched that way we have an area to throw the dirt that we generate from the excavation of the actual pond we got one over here we have an area to throw all that dirt so we're just being making sure that we're staying efficient on this job Everybody, um, excavation is complete. Liner is in. We're gonna twist it just a little bit more just to be able to maximize the footprint of this liner. Guys have done a fantastic job. We really didn't run into too many challenges in through here. Went pretty smooth. The only challenge we have is really access. We are working on our second truckload over there. You can see Chris moving some of that soil back, but we had a lot of soil we had to get out of here, which isn't always a challenge for us on a job site, but getting rid of the spoils is always something that we definitely consider when estimating projects. But but, you know, sometimes we underestimate the amount of time and energy and effort that logistics really play into building a profitable water feature. So anyways, just enough on that. Don't want to bore you with all that stuff. But what I did want to bore you with is some exciting news. So while we were over here excavating, I got a call from the homeowner and there was a kind of a master landscape design and I'll show you that. Actually, I'll show you that right now. Let's do that. Let me pull up my phone here. This is how Brian Helfrich and I communicate when he translates his vision. So right here, you guys can see that. So here is the master landscape plan. I know, I know, but that's about what I have to work with. But this is the backyard. So you can see the gate right about there, Crestone pathway, there's a red bud right there. And then of course you've got a bunch of symbols, which is represents the water features and then a bunch of planting along this side of the fence over here. So with that in mind and with that said, I got a call from the homeowner and she was curious if that was something that we would want to tackle while we were here. And me being the plant person that I am, I said, of course, because I would love nothing more than for us to be able to really finish this thing off and see this entire backyard be completely transformed and come to total fruition. So I've been on the horn for about the last 45 minutes trying to procure plant material, get the expense of the plant material, get an estimate put together on my end, communicating with the customer, making sure that they were on board. And lo and behold, I spoke to the customer and she is all about us just taking care of everything. And more often than 
not, that's a very common answer from most of our homeowners. While we're here, they just want to see it done, done. So anytime we can do that, it's always more profitable and efficient for us to do it while we're here and figure that out. Take the half hour, 45 minutes to really think about how to get this together and do it while we're here rather than coming back after the fact. It always ends up costing the, the homeowner more money and it makes us less profitable. So we are going to rip out the rest of this grass and get everything prepped and ready. And we are going to be bringing in plant material to also finish this off. So really, really cool that we're able to do that. And it's a nice additional value add for this project and really finishing this thing off. And now you guys get to reap the benefit and see this project completely transformed instead of just the water feature, which is what you occasionally see in some of our videos. So once we get that stuff out, we're gonna tweak this liner, get it hooked up to the skimmer, go ahead and start rocking this pond and get the water feature done today. And then we'll focus on the landscape and finishing everything else off tomorrow. So super excited about that. I'm glad that you guys are along for the ride. Juan, what do you think? What were you gonna do right there? What are you gonna do? Woo! Okay. <laughs> All right, shall we keep going? I think so. stuff out here. Pond is getting rocked. We just located where that medium stack slate fear is going to go. We have it plumbed. You can see our two inch line coming out this way and that's going through a bulkhead fitting in the liner right back underneath Juan's armpit down here. You can see he's got that bulkhead fitting in there. That's a watertight seal by using compression and then we are continuing that two inch line back out here to a manifold that has a valve box that will go over the top and what we're doing is we are splitting water that's being sent from the pump sitting inside the skimmer box up to our biofall. So we have a ball valve on this side of the manifold, allowing us to put back pressure on the line that feeds our sphere, which is what Juan is attaching right now. And, but we also put a ball valve on that so that we can have ultimate flexibility when really fine tuning and tweaking the amount of water going to not only our biofalls, which sits up in there, but also our stack slate sphere. Remember this feature is all about the interactivity. When locating the sphere, we really wanted to take into consideration how it's going to be viewed but also how it's going to be used and touched and felt and how it fits into the overall design of this water feature so i love that it sits right down here in the pond water level will be right about here on the sphere itself maybe right there yeah, about right there so you've got about two-thirds of it exposed also what's cool is as i back up i want to kind of explain to you what's cool is, is this is going to give the left hand side of our feature kind of what i would refer to as weight it's a prominent feature so what it's going to do is it's going to frame out the waterfalls that's coming into the pond which will and when I say framing it out if you remember there's frame rocks in a waterfall you've got a high rock on one side typically a high rock on the other and then a smaller rock down in the middle where the water will flow between those two frame rocks so this is going to actually act as a frame rock and then I will get another large boulder over here and we will build a waterfall so that will hold back the water and the sphere will channel it over the spill stone and between the other frame rock over here now when when I'm looking at frame rocks, I want to make this not feel so large and overpowering. So I need to have somewhat of a substantial frame rock in through here. Now I'm also looking at elevations. In here, we have probably from the bottom of this shelf all the way up to this ledge right here is only about 14 inches. And then we step up another foot up into here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out if I should find something, a frame rock that would mimic the size of this sphere. And what it'll do is it will even out the heaviness of the sphere and really scale all this side of the water feature down while also retaining a lot of this soil that needs to be retained over here. So almost as a double frame rock where it's framing out this waterfall here, but will also frame out part of that next shelf and then start that wing wall up and through here. I love this big boulder right here off the peninsula. We just need to get something back behind it that's taller than it so that your eye is continuing to be carried up through the water feature, not hyper-focused on one element or another. Down in front and through here, there will just be a big gravel beach that will butt right up to a decomposed granite walkway that will kind of meander and twist and run parallel to the water feature itself and twist and turn and lead you back up to that really cool patio area that feels almost like a small courtyard coming out of that slider glass door. So we're gonna continue to work and try and get this bottom waterfalls and this back section of pond over here rock. And then that way, it'll make this side over here all that much easier to work. back 
back day two out here, day two, two, out here at this really fun, unique backyard space. And um, we are going to finish today. Regardless of whatever happens, we are finishing today. I promise you, at the end of this episode, we are gonna have a kick butt water feature that will tantalize all the senses. We are in great shape because we have DK back today. Chris is here. We've got, oh, sorry, let me leave you hanging. We've got Juan, Damien, Brian, Chris, David. We have a small army out here and we are gonna get this project done. We got plants yesterday too. We talked about how we made a quick audible and figured out that the customer wanted to just have everything completely done. So we got all the plants procured. We still have to pick up a couple trees and some mulch, but here's all those perennials back over here. We've got some variegated grasses. We've got some some substance hosta. We've got some beautiful coral bells. We've got a hydrangea paniculata back there. That's a dwarf variety though. So that thing's only get three or four feet tall. We've got some of this really awesome sedum tile. This is a shade mix, but this stuff comes in like these tiles, like almost like laying carpet or laying sod. We've got a bunch of vinca. We've got some creeping jenny back there, which you know is always a favorite of mine. But of course we have to completely transform this space, but we are well underway and getting things rocking and rolling on this project. So we've got a couple waterfalls to build and then we are cruising. We'll get the landscape in. We've got a decomposed granite pathway that's gonna come through here. Redbud tree over there. We gotta finish up our lighting. It's just gonna be awesome. Such a fun day. You guys ready to go? Let's do this. We have the pond full now. Water feature is done. Just a few small tweaks here and there, but right now we're working on getting the landscape in, the steel edging. You can see some of the plants are already going in. This is honestly the fun part because this is the kind of the dressing on the Christmas tree, as we say sometimes, or the like it's that last 10% that really ties everything back together. So we're feverishly working to try and get this thing done and get it done in a efficient but yet profitable amount of time. So we're doing the best we can right now. The guys are working on straightening out that red bud. They will end up having this awesome kind of cantilevered canopy. It's an understory tree, but here it's going to fill up that space. It'll be nice and airy. Eventually we'll, it'll get limbed up and open up the view for that window. So where you can see kind of through the branches down onto the water feature here. And we've got some perennial grasses. We've got single hydrangea right there. And then we have a beautiful red leaf Japanese maple that's going to sit back over there that will really tie that area together. So really, really pleased with how it's turning out. It looks stupendous and I can't wait to get everything finished and buttoned up. So we'll check back in in a little bit and let you see the finished product because that will be the end. Love it. made it to the end of the project. We are finished. Do you guys want to see it? Come on. think this looks incredible I don't know what I love more I love it all I can't even pick one singular thing it's just got so much going on it's so incredible and it's a complete transformation of this backyard space you've got a beautiful waterfalls into a meandering stream the sphere the size of the pond the landscape everything is so cohesive and works together so well and completely takes the space to its fullest potential we had the opportunity to landscape this project 
project and really just completely pimp it out. And that's exactly what we did. We have some great relationships with some local nurseries and they're the purveyors of all this gorgeous plants and the space just completely looks transformed now that it's all planted, mulched, cleaned up, and not to mention this decomposed granite pathway that leads you from this lower patio area up to the upper patio, which you can see is already incredible. So why don't we take a walk up there and then get the bird's eye view looking back down on the project. So I love the fact that this backyard water feature, let's not even call it that, let's call it the backyard paradise that it is, has so many different areas to enjoy it from. You've got this upper patio that we're standing on right now, looking back on it, looking back towards the kind of coach house, Samantha's office, garage, little patio down there. It's just so awesome how pathways connect you through the garden, but the water feature is present in any and all viewing angles as well. I love the fact that you can see the side profile of the top waterfall splitting down into the stream, and you almost want to follow the stream down into the pond as you walk down the walkway. We've got a signature Japanese maple over here off to the left. This is a lace leaf Japanese maple. We'll just be one of those signature plants, a staple of the landscape, and really frame out this area in through here and funnel you down this decomposed granite pathway. And then on the right, we've got a multi-stem red bud. You guys know I love plants, especially red buds, but this has one of those vase-shaped branching structures. And as this thing matures, it will have a cantilever canopy that will be very airy. Light will be allowed to show through, but it'll almost feel as if you're walking through this tunnel as you walk through here as this thing matures. But I love as we're walking down the pathway, you get the side profile of the waterfall as you're watching it twist and turn. I love the various edge treatments. I love the sphere. The sphere is one of those things that you can see from up top as well as back in her office. Enjoy from this little patio. It's just one of those things that really is a staple without looking too obnoxious. It's an architectural element, but it really fits in well with the organic nature of the water feature. Right next to it is this really cool gravel beach that you guys see us do in so many of the videos. I love that the water comes all the way back into here and it completely changes the sedge. It's not all rock, 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 rock in through here. There's a variety of big rock, but you can see these swaths of either big gravel, little gravel, big chunks, plants. It just looks so natural. It looks so natural with the various edge treatments. It really just strengthens the overall design. One of my other favorite things is I love bringing green right up to the edge of the water. The most successful water features in my opinion are the ones where you can't tell where the land stops and the water begins. And when talking about edge treatments, that's what I love about some of these plants. We've got this sedum tile that literally is like pieces of carpet of these growing steppable various sedums. So, so awesome. And over time, these are gonna wrap over the top of these boulders and cobbles. And you're not even gonna be able to tell that there's anything there. It's just gonna be green and the water will come right up to the edge. I love how it kind of twists and turns and just marries everything. You've got the hardscape, You've got the hardness of the rock, but then you have the soft stuff in the middle, just tying everything together and not making it feel so rocky and sterile. Aside from the visual aesthetics, which is always incredible and such a gratification for us to be able to see it come to fruition, I think even more important than that is the purpose behind this design and the garden space itself. So why don't we bring Samantha in and she, and she can kind of elaborate a little bit more on how she intends to use the garden, which I think is such a cool idea. Who better to hear from than herself? So whether you guys know or not, Samantha herself has actually already seen this project and lived with it for a couple days. So she's actually standing right here. This is Samantha. So welcome her to our channel, everybody. So Samantha, I was just getting into trying to tell our viewers, one of the coolest things about this feature for us was knowing that you had, I don't want to say ulterior motives, you had you had more of an ultimate vision on how you wanted to use the space. So yes. do you mind elaborating on that sure. and yes. letting them know yes, what yes, was yes. some of the motivating factors yeah. for you? Uh, yes, absolutely. So I really created this this space for my job, really. I'm a speech language pathologist and I built an office uh, attached to my garage several years ago when COVID hit. And a lot of the kids I work with have some extra sensory needs. And I noticed when they came, they were always kind of walking up to my office. A bird flew by or butterflies in the garden. They were really attracted to that. And I started doing some research about nature-based therapy intervention. And I I went to visit the Aquascapes facility and just sort of had this crazy idea like I need to put a pond in my backyard. So it's been a super fun pro 
project and I can't even tell you just the response from my kids this week. It was just like pure joy. I mean, every, every single child sort of went to a different feature in the ponds and lots of words, lots of just surpri surprise and shock. And it's very cool because you can see the pond from my office and you can actually hear the running water, which is very calming for the kids that I work with. So it's been amazing. And you know, you were great to work with. Like, you know, I envisioned it being awesome, but I just didn't know how awesome it was going to be. So it has just been, it's been amazing. And I've gotten to see parents, you know, reaction when they've walked in too. And they're like amazed. And I have several parents that visit the Aquascapes facility just to bring their kids in there because it's calming for their kids. So having this here, it's such a motivator for our kids. It's been amazing. So I'm so looking forward to just kind of having, you know, lessons built around the space and the seasons changing and you know now it's fall but I can't wait for like winter to teach about like okay where did the fish go because we're planning on putting on in some fish in like a week so there's so many just sort of natural learning opportunities that are going to come up and I just am so excited about it so that's so incredible yeah that really is it's so self-validating and I know how selfish that sounds but it's like knowing that you're doing something so incredible and you've taken your brainchild right of wanting to have this outdoor classroom where you can develop lessons and teach and exercise and you're enriching these children's lives you're enriching their families lives because you are helping them with their children in their own lives and then which they take that home with them and it's so neat because to see all of the tertiary benefits of creating this space for you and that does you didn't even talk about the personal enjoyment of you actually living here and enjoying it when you're you don't there's have that kids. too there's that too there's but that it's just, too but i do work a lot you know there's a shortage of us in my job so I'm out here a lot so I think it's nice because I didn't even realize but the sound of the running water in my office is so calming yeah. even for me so it's just it's been really cool so and I have you know I've got two teenagers they're obviously enjoying it and my husband I think he thought I was a little bit crazy when I told them like hey we're gonna put a pond in the backyard for my job he was like wait 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 what <laughs> but it's been so cool to do and you know there's always like okay are the kids gonna like it like is it gonna be worth it you know you always kind of question stuff but I knew once you came and I saw you guys how you do it and put it in and this kind of the emotion and energy you guys put into building it that made me feel like very comfortable and I knew I was doing the right thing you know I love my job I love what I do and I'm just happy to kind of give back and do something extra for the kids that I work with that's, that's so awesome that's so awesome I just want to say thank you for the opportunity I mean it was so fun yeah. and uh, for you trusting us to, to be able to to help you with the ultimate vision, you know, that you have and just giving us the opportunity, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. So really thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, That's I, so I want to tell you something. So I wasn't supposed to peek, right, when you were mm -hmm. doing it, and I really didn't. But my daughter's room is right up there uh -huh. with the plants, and she's my nature lover. She has the best, like, view of the pond. So I went up there, and I was like, gosh, I don't want to peek, but I have such a good view when you guys were putting <laughs> it together in, on Friday. But I saw you down here, and you kind of backed up, and you sat, like, right back here, and you looked at the pond, and you were like the formation of stuff and you're like this is gonna be awesome I saw that oh I really up there and I heard you say that and it made me feel really good about it because I know how much you like your job yeah. and how much I like my yeah. job and so I knew it was gonna oh work. that's cool so, yeah. yeah so thank you no oh, yeah. I appreciate that I really do yeah. guys girls women men children alike all of our viewers thank you for watching this has been such a special project for obvious reasons you guys watched the episode but this was just so much fun huge thank you to Samantha her husband her family Family, and then all of the people that she gets to help thank you for giving us a chance to bring what we love and enjoy into their lives and hopefully we can make someone else's life a little bit better just through the art that we create so thanks so much for watching till next time we'll see you later